The Hearthstone season is almost over, and in this video I will show you what are the best Hearthstone decks right now, so you can be climbing to some easy legend. I'm gonna show you 5 of the best decks, but we will also check out all of the other good working archetypes for each individual class, so stick around to the end. If you're serious about Hearthstone, consider subscribing to the channel, cause I'm gonna keep on giving you high quality meta reports, so you guys know what to play with and against. Also, don't forget you can hire me for some Hearthstone coaching. Now, let's check out the decks. The first deck on the list has to be Frost Death Knight. Even though Death Knight had a rocky start, after the nerfs, Frost Death Knight really started to shine hard, and this deck can do some serious climbing for you. The deck is not super easy to understand, especially at first, but once you get the hang of it, you should be climbing in no time. I already gave you guys a very detailed guide about this deck, so make sure to check it out so you know how to play with and against it. The gist of the deck is, you want to be going for early game tempo with your minions on the board so you can connect for some damage, but you also need to be protecting your face because you don't have any sort of healing, and some decks have a lot of burst from hand nowadays, so you gotta be careful to minimize the damage you can be taking. After that you basically can develop a very big combo from hand, or you can just keep on freezing the board over and over with frost worms, and that's usually enough to take the win. This particular variant is running one guild trader and one Talnos, so you can get some extra spell power, but we're also running a couple of death chillers, which can be wonderful for the early game so you can control the board, but also late game for that extra chip damage. Just don't forget that this doesn't go on the same target twice. If the opponent's board is empty and you play this, it's only gonna be dealing one damage per spell. Matchup wise, here's what it looks like, and Ram Druid is gonna be your worst opponent, because they have a lot of armor, and they also have a lot of big stuff against you, and you can't really handle that for too long. This spell mage is also pretty annoying because they're gonna give you fat spells and they can also gain a lot of armor and play big dragons too fast. But other than that, everything else is pretty green. Mulligan wise going first and second, the bone breaker is always gonna be keep, Harbringer of Winter as well, and Tessarian too. Horn of Winter, I think you gotta have a very good hand already to think about keeping Horn of Winter, so you can actually tempo it out super fast, but normally I don't really like keeping it too much unless the hand is already perfect for it. Death Chiller is also a great keep, Rhyme Fang Sword can make the cut as well, and even Overseer Frigidara and sometimes Chill Fallen Baron and Lady Death Whisper make the cut for me. Frost Strike is also interesting, especially if you're expecting a board-centric matchup against you. When on the coin, the situation is pretty similar. I wouldn't really be keeping Guild Trader though, unless I'm very sure I'm playing against something that is gonna require that extra guild trader spell power. Frost Strike becomes a lot more keepable, Tessarian's still great, Horn of Winter is also a lot more keepable when going second usually. And if you already have Carbringer of Winter, you can also keep Nerubian Visor. The weapon can still make the cut honestly, and same goes for Overseer Frigidara. For other good Death Knight decks, we have several variations of the Frost Death Knight at the top, and on the second page we can also see this new aggro unholy Death Knight that has been popping up, and Blood Death Knight is also still usable, but the stats for it are just not so great. On the number 2 spot, we have Quest Spell Fell Demon Hunter, and this is basically a mix of the Quest Fell Demon Hunter and the Spell Fell Demon Hunter from the past. This deck is far from your traditional Hearthstone experience, but it's definitely very powerful if you know what you're doing with it. The minions you choose to shuffle in your deck with the weapon are a Lady Steno, Silver Moon Arcanist, and also Jace. Out of these, a Lady Steno is actually one of the most important ones, because with all of the discounts you're gonna be getting out of your quest, you're gonna be able to do a lot of damage with her pretty early. Silver Moon Arcanist can help you get extra damage with Unleash Fell, as well as Fell Barrage, and also Mark of Scorn, which is always gonna be dealing damage for you. But don't forget, if you use Silver Moon Arcanist, you can't actually go face with things like Fell the Ray Warband, so be careful with that. Fell the Ray Warband and also Coordinated Strikes give you a bunch of tokens, so you can utilize your Sinful Brand, which you can use two of on the same target, and it's gonna be starting to deal four damage each. And also this sinful brand remains on the minion, like if you put it on something big like a Forten, and you don't kill it off the turn where you slap a bunch of sinful brands on, you're still gonna be able to keep on dealing damage to it on the next turn as well. So this is something to think about mainly when playing against this deck, but also when playing with it, because it could allow you to do some busted stuff. We also have Jace so he can repeat all of those fell spells. And also with Kurtris and Lady Steno, you can reset a lot of hero powers that way, and that's tons of damage. 
We also have Aldrachi Warblade in here if you're in need of some lifesteal. And the rest is basically card draw so you can get the two discounts from your quest. Which is the main purpose of the quest by the way. You don't really plan on playing the 5 mana curses or anything. So don't waste time and resources trying to complete the last step. And especially don't waste the 5 mana just to be playing the curses. Expecting that the discounts afterwards actually matter. Matchup wise, here's what it looks like. And again, Ram Druid is gonna be your worst matchup because they have a lot of armor gain, but everything else looks pretty green if you know what you're doing with it. Mulligan wise, you basically wanna be looking for your card draw, with Sigil being the best, Spectral Sight, especially if it's outcasted on the left, Mark of Scorn is also not a bad keep, Chaos Strike 2, and that's kinda about it. You don't really wanna be uh, keeping too much other stuff, you just wanna start drawing cards so you can start getting some good discounts and take the game from there. For other good Demon Hunter decks, here's what it looks like. We still have the Fell Relic quest Demon Hunter doing okay, and there's also other variants of the Spell Demon Hunter out there without the quest too. But Aggro Demon Hunter is not something you should really be playing, especially if you want to be climbing high. On the number 3 spot we have Miracle Rogue, and this Miracle Rogue is actually not running Draka anymore because she's a little bit too expensive now. Miracle Rogue is going back to his roots with Wild Pog Knolls plus Maestra, and you also have the Concoction Package in here. What you want to be doing with this deck is get some good early game tempo with the Gnolls, after that maybe get some large locations, and you also have Krabato for tons of damage and pressure in the mid game. And if that's not enough you also have the Astalor in there, which could be a win condition of his own. We also have Edwin for some nice card draw. And the concoctions can give you a lot of card draw and also a lot of flexibility like if you need to destroy some large minions you can discover those or you can get some random spells and all that good stuff. Matchup wise quest spell demon hunter is not gonna be great as well as aggro mage but everything else looks solid. When going first here's what the mulligans look like. Potion belt is gonna be pretty nice, your gnolls are gonna be great, cutlass is always gonna be a keep so you can start discounting the gnolls. Concoctor is not horrible as well, since Stone Graveyard can also make the cut. Also Potion Master Putricide could be a nice tempo play, but the rest probably not so amazing. And when on the coin the situation is similar, but also Krabatoa becomes a lot more keepable because you can tempo him out pretty fast. Like if you have prep into Serrated Bone Spike, you can literally coin out Krabatoa as soon as turn 3 that way. For Rogue we also have Thief Rogue with the jackpot package doing pretty good and also Miracle and that seems to be all of it for now, cause the latest nurse really did hit it hard. There's also still a Miracle Draka Rogue but it's barely above 50. On the number 4 spot we have Shockspitter Hunter still and it does seem that the nerf actually did not kill Shockspitter at all. This is basically what the deck looked like even before but now you simply can't do all of that broken stuff as early because the Shockspitter nerf makes your combo at least 2 mana more expensive now. You have a couple of good 1 drops in here so you get some tempo on the board, you have your blood seekers and your candle shots and you can also get weapons out of your wild seeds and that way you're gonna be able to load up Shockspitter a lot easier. You have selective breeders with which you can copy either your shock spitter or a storm pike battling ram or even a hydrolon because that could be an insane tempo on its own. You have a couple of keen eye spotters so you can control the board easier. Beast stalker tavish also helps you a lot with that. Your wild spirits are pretty annoying to deal with. And we also have Barracoto Bane for tons of card draw. Astalor again is a win condition of his own. And we have a couple of conjured arrows for that good card draw later on. Matchup wise this is very loaded and your only bad matchups seem to be the demon hunters and not that bad either. Everything else looks pretty pretty good. For the mulligan going first and second, spirit poacher and candle shot are always gonna be great keeps. Wild spirits as well, beast stalker tavish can also make the cut. Bloodseeker, try not to overdo it, if you're expecting especially a 2 health minion from the opponent sure you can keep that. Trog is also pretty nice, or the baddie guest but try not to keep both like you don't want to overdo it with one drops. Selective Breeder is not horrible either. And the Stormpike Battling Ram can also be pretty good, especially if you manage to find Hydrolom, so you can do something as soon as turn 5 with him. One on the coin, the situation looks pretty similar to me. For other good Hunter decks, Beast Hunter is still doing good, but Arcane Hunter doesn't look great. And on the last spot we have Big Spell Mage, which is doing really well, mainly because of the Frost Death Knights. The deck looks pretty close to what it used to from before, but we actually have a couple of Arcane Defenders, which are from the new set, which do make some sense including, even though I'm not really sure if they're really worth it. We also have Astalor in here, and that's about it for the new cards basically. You still have your Mailbox Dancers, which can help you get things like Belinda or Barbaric Sorceress as soon as turn 4, 
And the other cool thing about the mailbox dancer is, if the opponent actually doesn't kill it, you get to trade it off and make sure that the opponent actually has a zero mana spell in hand, so you can try and shoot with it with Barbaric Sorceress. Grey Sage Parish repeats all of your big spells, you have your Reckless Apprentice, plus Magister Down Grasp and Mordresh for your hero power package, Varden can freeze all the board, Deepwater Evoker gives you stuns of armor, couple of watch posts are pretty annoying in the early game, the locations are pretty nice for you, and yeah, basically it's still just big ol' spell mage. Matchup wise, the aggressive paladins are not gonna be great for you, and same goes for the aggressive shamans and enraged warrior, but you shouldn't be seeing too many of those. Secret mage might also be a problem, but everything else is good. Mulligan Y is going first and second, Belinda is always gonna be a keep, Far Watch Post and the location as well, Deep Water Evoker and Mailbox Dancer is pretty nice, Barbaric Sorceress and Amplified Snow Flurry as well, Pelican Diver can be pretty good too, but it's even better when going second actually. And when going second it's literally the same thing, even Reckless Apprentice might make the cut, especially if you're expecting a board centric matchup. For other good mage decks we also still have Aggro Mage doing well, and Pig Mage is also above 53%, so that's very usable too. Secret Mage is above 52 so even that can work. And that's about it for Mage right now. For the classes we didn't mention, with Druid, we still have Ramp Druid being the best performer, both with the 30 and the 40 package. Aggro Druid is still very usable at 54% win rate, and that's about it for Druid. For Paladins we have Aggressive Pure Paladin at the top, Silver Hand Paladin is also good, and also Dragon Control E Paladin is above 50, but Control Paladin not so much. Priest definitely took quite the big hit, and Plague Priest right now is the best performer it seems. And even Undead Shadow Priest is actually doing somewhat well, but it's just above 50, so Priest is not exactly amazing right now. With Shamans, Evolve Shaman is the best performer, and also Swarm Shaman is above 50, but not by much. For Warlock we have Imp Warlock, Curse Imp Warlock, and Phylactery Warlock being the best performers of the class. And Phylactery Warlock is a lot better than this, but it definitely takes a lot of skill to master. And for Warrior, right now only Enraged Warrior seems to be doing the trick, and there's not that big a sample size either, and even Quest Warrior is still apparently somewhat usable, but not very. So that's gonna be it for this top 5 guys, hope this helps you figure out what you wanna be playing in the last few days of the season. Drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video, or stream.